excited to be sharing this season of Lent together, a time of reflection, time of repentance, time of turning to God, the one who turns toward us. McCormick, do you have the witnesses video ready for us? Can you bring it up? Okay. Next Wednesday, we're ending our regular Wednesdays with a special event. Jonathan Swenson will be presenting the performance Witnesses, and it's eight different characters and their encounters with Jesus, and it's awesome. Um, please invite someone to join you and share the time together. If the weather is good, we'll try to open the windows so we have good ventilation so we don't spread germs around, and thank you to those that are helping with some of those details for him. Uh, it's great. Well, here they all are to give you a fresh look at Jesus. You tell me that I'm supposed to know this kid's going to be the Messiah, huh? He doesn't look like the Messiah. He looks like a baby. Oh, I suppose I should tell you something about myself if my sentiments about Jesus are going to make any kind of sense to you. And then you got me, who, like, I used to not be able to talk, right? Well, as you can see, I can do it now. <laughs> Woo! Jesus, you're going to be late for your own funeral, boy. I don't know about that, but he sure was late for mine. <laughs> and people scream things and nobody touches you. Afraid they might get what you got. What do you mean, scared to die? You see this knife right here, pal? I lost count at about 30 Gentiles with this knife. I was good at it, see? I don't care if a sinner's gonna have a steak dinner with this man, it's not happening. He's dead, Andrew. You got that? That's right. Dead. It doesn't matter now what he said. Wrong! I just saw Jesus, man! <laughs> Enough talk. Let's let their story begin. So that's a nice little intro. Um, You'll be able to hear him much better than you could hear him on, on that video. Are there any other announcements? Thank you to our youth and families for serving. You've done such a great job with the meals. One more Wednesday to share that time together. Okay, kids, come on up and get an instrument, and we're going to do a little marching and singing as we get started with our worship service tonight.
Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine with Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you, God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and In the stars that praise the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, Set us free and make us whole. <coughs> you who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ, Loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. <clears throat> May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. Let, Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you. Oh God, come to I me now. To you. Oh, hear me voice when I cry. Let my prayer rise up, let my prayer rise up, the lifting up of my hands, as I'm offering to as you, as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God, keep deep watch in my within heart, me, God. may the light of your love be my darling.
Our scripture tonight is from Ephesians, the third chapter. The writer is praying for the people of God. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, he may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being with the power of his Holy Spirit, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to Christ, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thankful for John and the sharing of his walk with Christ tonight. For those of you who have not met before, my name is John Dahl. I'm 73. I've been active, an active member of this church for almost 40 years. I was baptized and confirmed at Zumbro Lutheran in Rochester and was active in Luther League, which is what they called the youth back then, and choir at Zumbro. I was married by a Lutheran minister, and my three daughters were all baptized here at Our Saviors. And I've been active in church council, been on the property commission, the worship commission, singing the choir, playing the bell choir. Um, so you would think that I'm a very good example of how a good Christian would, should, would, should be, should, how, how a good sh Christian should turn out. But if you had asked me, say back when I was 19 or 20, so do you think you will continue to be practicing Christian into your middle and old age? If you had asked me that when I was 19 or 20, I said, no way. What are you even talking about? Absolutely not. When I was 20. So what tore me away from God, Christ, and the church? And what brought me back again? I guess you could say it started with my first anthropology class at Rochester Junior College. That's what they called it, RCTC back then. Professor Bateman asked the class, anthropology class, to raise their hands if they thought men had one less rib than women. Some people raised their hands, and I, th and I was thinking, well, didn't, didn't God take Adam's, one of Adam's ribs? And I didn't know what to answer, but I thought maybe, maybe he does have. Sure enough, in the second chapter of Genesis, it was after God had created man, and the man had given names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field, but for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Try counting sometimes. In fact, women and men have the same number of ribs. If you don't believe me, try counting them yourselves. It would make a fun exercise. And so began for me about 15, 20, or 20 years of being an atheist, a non-believer, or an agnostic, a doubter. I just couldn't reconcile, really couldn't reconcile what the Bible says about creation. Adam and Eve came and Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, and so forth and so on. Because if you take all that literally, the earth would be about 6,000 years old. And just so you know, if you believe that, it's fine with me. You can believe it's 6,000 years old. I'm not going to argue about it. But I couldn't reconcile what to me seems like a yawning gap between many literal interpretations of the Bible and what you need to believe if you read or watch anything about geology, biology, anthropology, or evolution. But those years of atheism and doubting were interrupted by many experiences, each of which nudged me closer to my current beliefs. There were many of these experiences, but here are some of the most interesting ones. An early one was when I was about 25 and traveling by myself in Mexico. 
I traveled mostly by bus, and I couldn't help but notice that on many, if not most, Mexican passenger buses, someone, probably the driver, had installed a really ornate and large picture of Jesus looking down on the driver right above and to the left of the driver. So when you got on the bus, you saw the picture of Jesus looking over the driver. It was usually lit up so that even at night, when driving on Mexico highways is the most dangerous, I was in maybe halfway back in the bus, if you gazed up to the front of the bus, you could see this glow shining down on the driver. And I have to, I have to admit that even in the middle of my non-belief and doubting, having this picture of Jesus made me feel better and safer traveling alone in a country where I was just beginning to learn the language. Another one took place in the waiting room outside the St. Mary's ICU where my father was fighting for breath after a severe heart attack. It happened that a family reunion which had been planned months before had coincided with his hospital stay. So instead of a joyous visit and dinner, typical reunion at my parents' house in Rochester, all six of my father's brothers and sisters, my aunts and uncles, and a few cousins too, came to the hospital. Where else were they gonna go? My dad was in the hospital. Uh, but they couldn't all, all see him in the ICU. So what did they do there in the waiting room? As I remember it, we pretty much spontaneously joined hands in a big circle and said the Lord's Prayer. And that sticks in my mind as the first time I really saw, heard, and felt the power of the Holy Spirit as expressed through people. But my doubting continued even after I joined this church. But I started seeing the light when I attended at the suggestion of Pastor John Olson, who some of you remember, many, many of you remember, a Curcio weekend, which is a really short but very intense course in Christianity. Some of the people here tonight have also attended these weekends, and if you ever get a chance to attend one, you should do it. I also, about that time, started attending weekly Bible studies and gradually came to realize that in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. Yes, but also for me he gave his only Son so that we might see that God expresses himself or herself through people. That's the way I see it now. Once I realized this, I started seeing it all the time. I saw it when I studied Martin Luther, the man who we name our church after, and I realized that among the many things Luther said and wrote, one of his main accomplishments was to make the biblical gospel understandable to common people. Luther recognized that the church had uh, somehow gotten in the way, had gotten between the people, between the teachings of Jesus and the people of, of the church when the church proclaimed the gospel only in Latin which the common people of Luther's country, Germany, didn't understand. So Luther translated the Bible into common German from the original languages of Hebrew and Greek and then compared it with the Latin translation so that people could read and hear about grace, the cornerstone of Christianity, for themselves. And while he was at it, Luther repurposed some beer garden tunes, wrote new words, and introduced them as hymns. <laughs> I see it in the eyes of you, this congregation, whenever I help serve communion. If you want to see Jesus with skin on for yourself, try volunteering to help serve communion. I feel it when I, when I play in this, uh, in this Our Savior's Bell Choir, when eight of us, playing a minimum of two or three bells each, are able to listen to each other so that when one of us has trouble, picks up the wrong bell, has to turn a page, misses a beat, we're all listening to each other, so that we adapt, slow down or speed up, skip or move forward a measure, so that at the end, we all finish at the same time and look up with radiant faces and listen as the rings fade. <laughs> to do this in the house of worship is a great example of God's ability to express himself or herself through the actions of people. <clears throat> and I hear it in the words of recovering alcoholics who have come to the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous, which, in case you didn't know, is really very God-centered. God is mentioned in seven of the 12 steps, especially the third step, which is made a decision to turn our will and lives over to God as we understood him. I've heard lots of alcoholics say that this was a big stumbling block, that they really wanted to get sober and stay sober, but 
all this about God and religion. Some of them had a bad experience with religion in, in, in their youths. It made them hesitant until someone, usually a sponsor or another recovering alcoholic at an AA meeting, got them to accept God as we understood him as something as simple as the group consciousness of the people around him or her at any AA meeting. That God is expressed through the thought, words, and actions of other people. Ask me sometime how I know this. So that's it. I've come to believe that it doesn't matter that if you read the Old Testament, literally the earth is only 6,000 years old. It's okay to look at the Bible as God's word, but maybe written more as a user's manual than a textbook. I've come to believe that to quote Matthew 18, verse 20, for where two or three gather together in my name, there I am with them, is true right here and now. Amen. Thank you, John. What a blessing to hear from our members this Lenten season. We'll join together in hymn 328, Restore in Us, O God. Your car. 
Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. receive an offering. Any loose offering is for the 40 Together initiative, our companion synod work, and also work with ethnic, in ethnic specific communities in our synod, in our region. After a moment of special music, we'll pray together the 40 Together prayer. And this is a nice opportunity if you would like to light a candle as a visual sign of your prayer. Or sometimes we don't have words for our prayers, but we have sighs and the visual of the candle. So this is a good time to do that as well. And we have a, a little candle with some flowers to remember those that we pray for in the Ukraine.
Feel free to continue to light candles. Let's pray together the 40 together prayer that you have on the second page of the bulletin. God of relationship, we give you thanks for the blessing of connectedness throughout the season of Lent. Deepen our relationships with one another, with our community, and with all our global partners. We pray specifically today for our siblings in Christ in Tanzania, Colombia, the U.S.-Mexico borderlands, and our local South Sudanese communities. May they have a strong sense of your Holy Spirit's nearness and guidance, and may we be inspired to accompany them in meaningful ways. In the compassionate name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord, we lift up to you the needs of our hearts. Thankful that you hear even when we can't have words that you hear our sighs and our thoughts and our longings. Lord, we lift up those in our community who are living with grief, and we pray for those who have had to flee their homes in the Ukraine. May they be received with hospitality and love, and we pray for peace. We pray that your Holy Spirit would do miraculous things in keeping people safe, in the midst of terrible violence and bring your people to safety. We pray for those whose lives are upended and also for those who are serving um, in a war that they likely do not know the true purpose of. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, Lord, grant to us our merciful God, source of all life and goodness, May your peace that passes all understanding surround us, that we may live your gospel of good news through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. As you leave, share a sign of God's peace with one another. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.